in a little tiny town of Ward Trace, Tennessee. The hotel was built based on one foundation, the one Tennessee walking horse. Strolling Jim was one of those horses that lived and died and is actually buried behind this building I stand in front of in Ward Trace, Tennessee. This building was built in 1917. The mass is three different floors. It houses the music lounge. And even when everybody checks out, it's not empty. Ghost Paranormal is here tonight to be able to get a grasp on what's going on in this hotel, to be able to find out who's residing here and not paying their bill. As we go through into the entrance of the building, I want to make it clear this building is and probably always will be, at least for a long while, on it. And we're going to show that tonight. Tonight, on Hunting the Unknown Truth, we visit the Walking Horse Hotel. We are Ghost Paranormal, a team of paranormal investigators from different walks of life. We have our own lives and our own families. We all have had our own personal experiences with the paranormal. We come together to find out what makes the doors open and close on their own. We come together to find out what makes the hair stand up in the back of your neck. We come together for one specific purpose, to hunt the unknown truth. So there was a staircase here, but it's gone. So, and she looks like a dwarf animal. So it's it's a long, long time, time ago. ago. Okay. Long time ago. And uh, but it, that's kind of a residual thing. But when she comes down, she sees the steps, and when I look up, I see the staircase that was there. Okay. Um, the thing about this room uh, that I drew down before I came here was um, in the corner of the building here because that's the addition so this is not this is where the actual spot is that is where energy comes up does a funnel all the way up to the third floor and when the energy is activated you can feel it in your solar plexus okay. you're standing here yeah. but when it opens up it goes all the way through like a, almost a little funnel or tornado going up to the third floor Okay. Then it go. Then it has a path that the spirits follow that go down the hall to the other end of the building. Okay. So, but this is the spot where it all starts. Wow. Okay. And they covered up a well or a spring house over in this area, and that carries a lot of energy still here with this. There's some kind of sludge, you know. So this is kind of a dark spot. Okay. Um, the gentleman, the, the blacksmith that I see that was here or on the property before the building was built, uh, his energy is drawn here when it's activated. But his name is Cody. Cody. Okay. I think Cody Dixon or Cody, they called him Dixie or something. Okay. Might be because he came from Dixie. Little their name. Nickname. But uh, he's kind of like activated in here. See, right now I'm very nauseous. Oh, if you want to stand there, you can feel the. Tell me when you can feel the gut change. Oh, right here. It's because it's trying to access your solar plexus. That's how spirit, your spirit comes in and out of your body to here when you do astral travel. And so when your body clenches up like that, yeah. that means your protective system is working. That, right. that it's trying to drain your energy or get into your access your energy. Yeah, that's almost immediate when I stood over here. It's very nauseating. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I don't like it. But that is, but the, the blacksmith is drawn here, but he's a darker, lower energy, but okay. not, not evil or anything, just just severe. But okay. when he's here, he would make someone feel uncomfortable. But like I said, when the energy goes up, it goes all the way up through to the top. To the third floor. To the third floor. And then on the second floor, I can already tell somebody from 205 is calling me. So I don't know what that is. But okay. from standing here, this is the energy center. Okay. This is where it all starts. Now at the other end, 
towards where the parking lot is, cut a corner to there, there's a building there. There's some kind of activity that comes across the street to that corner of the building, but it's a separate energy source. Okay. This one is where the dude is. This is this is where it's very kind of dark uh, um, and the energy upstairs is kind of blood. There's a lot of blood attached with it because I taste the metallic. So okay. I'm having blood experiences. So I'm going to say that any time that it's activated, this is where the, the, the juju starts. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Um, the little girl that I sent, um, <laughs> we'll wait till we get to the room with the piano on her. Okay. But when she comes in the building, she comes from that way. Okay. From that direction. She did not die in this building, uh, but she liked the piano. She likes the piano. Okay. She liked the horses, and they had some kind of other animal here. And I think at one time in the 60s or 70s, she was here, and they had like a fair, a petting zoo or something out here in the parking lot, and she liked the, there was a llama. So that, you know, she's talking about stuff that's more modern, because she's very antique looking. Okay. Um, but she, she likes here, she likes the piano, She like, but when she comes in, she comes in the other corner of the building. She doesn't come in through here. And she has her own little way that she's come in when they would bring her. So it didn't have to do with this. Uh, but she does like the piano, um, and she likes cats, so I think she likes the cat upstairs. Now last time we were here, um, we had a really strange energy source, right? Yeah. Well, that's yeah, right here say, somewhere is where the, the water source is. That's yeah, under that's, the building. That's not a bad hit. It's where the water source is. And there are spirits and energies and sludge and ogunk that um, works its way through that. Because okay. spirits can travel through wells <coughs> and stuff. Okay. But I think they have their spring house out in here or well or whatever it was, and then this is all expanded over it. Oh. So, and there's um, a little short guy here, but he's not a child. Okay. He's not a child. He's a little person. He's a little person. Okay. Uh, but uh, but he's not a child. Okay. And he has something to do with upstairs, but I can say, I can heard somebody talking about him, and he's short, but he's not a, he's not a boy. <coughs> Okay. So he gets mad when people refer to him as a as a as a boy. Yeah. Oh. So, okay. that, so that is that where the boy came in? Um, Maybe somebody mistaked him as a boy. I think the they're boy. mistaking him because um, he's slightly violent, but uh, but he's not the um, he's not a child. <laughs> so they it, it makes him a little peeve. Peeve. You know, and a lot of people are not experiencing bad things here. Right. But it's like there's a lot of severe stuff that has happened here that there's some general spirits like the little girl. Right. And then there's, you know, some st there's some other stuff going on that's very, I guess some of it's recorded and some of it seems to be ongoing. Okay. But it's old, old stuff. Uh, the lady on the steps is, uh, is residual. Okay. But, um, um, uh, but I think really more of the activity is more upstairs. So, okay. Because, like I said, when the energy spot hits, then all the stuff upstairs opens up. And okay. uh, I think upstairs 205 will be something we need to go look at. Okay. I think on the third floor. A 205 isn't Raymond's apartment, is it? No. 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 Okay. I mean, um, it's so far, like when you're going down the hall, it's the last room on the left right before you go out to the, like, the balcony veranda. Oh, the, the one? Okay, I know the one. And they call it the train room, is what a lot of people call it. Uh, but down here, you've got pretty much, you know, there's stuff that activates around here, and then it feeds off the other stuff. Okay. But I would say you have a water source under here somewhere. Okay. Um, the energy source over there, I'm not sure why it started off, why it's like it is, but okay. it's, but it does, um, they could probably do something to, to make it where it's not as severe and eventually would kind of die down. Right. But it is a lot of trauma, some kind of trauma associated okay. thing. So, okay. so we'll, we'll see.
All right. And sometimes where things happen where blood's done and stuff like that, then that makes energy spots where spirits come up through that. Okay. Because they can use that to access that energy. All right. Okay. You want to try the second floor? Let's go to the second floor. Sounds good. All right. Let's go. And like I was telling Billy Joe earlier, right. I don't know why I'm sensing it here, but it's like someone running with their blo they're bleeding. Running while they're bleeding? Yes. And it may have been, and I feel blood coming out my nose. Uh, it's actually this path. I mean, the boo, right. right through here. And they're like they're holding, they're trying to hold the blood in. The blood in. Okay. So they don't bleed to death and they're heading for the door. And I don't know if that's when they died and their spirit's going in this jar in that panic mode. Right. Or if it's an actual physical self, but I feel like, you know, blood. Cool. Which at other places we've been, I have never mentioned blood traumas and stuff like that. So, but this place has a lot of blood trauma. Wow. Okay. So. Car outside. Uh, how do we go to two? Right here. Okay. into this room. Um, I'm not sure why he's saying it's changed. So something, I mean, this has been, this was different apparently to him. Okay. At one point, I don't know why, and it may be because of the piping or Now this what? is, what is room, this is room 203. Yeah. 203? Yeah. But it's, um, I'm drawn here. Let me see. I hate to leave you on <laughs> Let me see where I'm going. Right. That down here, but this has changed, so I don't know. My um, energy spot is through here, but I don't want to go through to that room. It's, mm -hmm. it's this one is what attracts. Um, Drawn to two of This is this is the one that's got the spot. But he when he comes when the guy comes through here, right. he comes down the hall and he goes this way. He goes this and way. And that's why two oh five showed up. Because I don't really feel anything in two oh five that really matters. And of course so the staircase what came up through here from downstairs. Okay. And that's um at one time. I mean, it would be like a four, you know, have like a um, landing. Okay. This is a room I don't like. I feel something in there, but I'm not sure what I feel. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, uh, but it's, I feel something odd in there, but not really anything really big, except for that. Feel weird. Let me see how that. No, get yourself ran. adjusted. Um, cause I think it's just in the way of the energy when the energy goes up. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just part of that. Cause the real source of stuff is upstairs. On the third. Okay. So, but what you've got here is when it activates, the man ghost <coughs> comes from about the third door. And it runs through here like in an emergency. I'm feeling a little bit of something in here 
but I'm not sure. I mean, it's like a, I think it's residual male energy. Okay. I don't room, think it's really a, an active ghost. In room 202. 202. But I'm not sure, you know, but I think it's, I mean, it's a little residue, but not anything to write home to mama about. Okay. Uh, but whatever that room was, the spirit comes and goes with us. Okay. Um, but I can hear yelling from upstairs. Okay. So, so shall we? Shall we? Right. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do it. The, the blacksmith stays downstairs. The, um, uh, let me see, I gotta read this. Light. Okay, okay. And then get down, I think the person that is being told to get down is a male. I think being told by a male okay. to get down. Now, I associate something of this, the short guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, being associated with some of this. So, um, but he has some kind of energy up here. So I'm not sure what all that is. Okay. But uh, for your major hunting, it would be from this room to that room. Okay. That's funny because the last time we were here, we really didn't get a whole lot up here. We got most of it down in the second, second floor, floor. So it must be traversing the building. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, um, well, it, there's energy that's happening downstairs. Yeah. But for whatever reason, when I'm getting it, I'm getting it's just this is just funky. Okay. And too, that may be why it attracts things like why they have coffins and pants and spooky stuff because uh, the trauma here attracts that. Okay. And um, the best thing to do for that eventually, if they want to kind of calm that down, is clean this place up. Paint it, you know, get it nice and clean. Change the environment. Change the environment. Yeah. Take all the horror things out, but you know. But That's their business, so they're yeah. they're gonna want to hold on to it. Yeah. So okay. well, then they'll be in the right place. This is the right place for it. So yeah. you know, they'll get some activity, but it feeds the activities that's here. Okay. When we so. walked down the hallway before when we first got here, there was clearly a man standing right there. Really. Okay. Well, now, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to have to sit down and kind of, uh, you can ask questions. Yeah. But pretty much what I can tell you from up here, that's what I feel up here. Okay. You know, I don't have names association with it, I just have physical uh, self of uh, someone damaged. Uh, or damaging. Okay. Um, and just a little chaos. But when I was on the second floor, I could hear them yelling from up here. So whatever was happening down there, it's like it either started up here and moved down there or started down there and moved up here. But I can hear the yelling downstairs when I'm downstairs. Well, I know that they were trying, I know I talked to Joe Peters, the owner of the building, and he and I were one time, last time we were here, actually, we were discussing what would make this place active. <laughs> yeah, we weren't really sure of any traumas that ever happened here or anything like that. So you may be answering a lot of those questions uh, based on you know on what you're telling us now. So yeah, um, you know, trauma follows those uh, you know follows yeah. those events. So yeah, all right. But, so. I, but there's some kind of blood trauma because it's almost like bloody steps or black steps down the hallway. Okay, all right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and break away uh, here in just a second to begin the investigation. I um, hope you got a lot of information from Mark's walk uh, through this. It always helps prepare us to be able to do this show. And uh, it's great to have an advantage. I think it's an advantage on hunting when you have someone with his experience and his level of ability. So, uh, but stay with us for a moment. We're going to come back in just a second to begin the investigation. I'm Rich Rillen with Ghost Paranormal, this is Shalissa. We want to introduce a new, new piece of equipment to you right now, it's called the Ghost Meter Pro. It's a piece of equipment we use religiously on the show as well as in every investigation that we do. The Ghost Meter Pro is different than a regular Ghost Meter. It has four different filter settings on this device that allow you to be able to do your investigations better with more clarity. 
Filter number one that you see lit up here, that is for recent passings because they operate on a different level of EMF. When you go to mode number two, by depressing the power button, turning it back on, pressing the button on the other side, you go to mode two. Mode two is for ancient passings. They operate with a different level of EMF once again. Now when you go to mode three, mode three is regular EMF detection. Phones will set it off, microwaves will set it off, just like any other EMF detector whatsoever. Now when you go to mode four, Mode 4 is communication mode. Communication mode is the only mode we re really use on the show. This mode here actually allows you to be able to operate with the entities with a clear one for yes, twice for no. It's extremely accurate. It's been proven by our team to be accurate with EVPs to back it up. Now, this mode also has volume on it. Right now, that's the search pattern mode that you're hearing. That search pattern mode is actually looking for something to come and talk to it. When it engages an entity, this dome light will go solid, that sound will stop, and you're in communication with something. This device, everyone that's bought and sold, is sent out individually tested to a specific set of standards that we've designed. Ghost Meter Pro stands behind their product. Go with the Ghost Meter Pro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to do a really good walk through with Mark. We got some really great information about what goes on in this building, um, but we're not the only ones that have ever investigated here. There've been other teams in here before. Uh, the gentleman I'm standing with right now, Brandon Boston. Brandon, I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Hard to see in the dark, I know. <laughs> uh, Brandon's investigated here many, many times before. But Brandon, you also got a book coming out, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, my book is titled "Battling Demons of Darkness," and it will be. Uh, I mean, it'll be hitting nationwide in all the major bookstores on September 8th of 2013. And also, um, in around April, I believe you'll be able to pre-order it online on Barnes & Noble, uh, Amazon, and Llewellyn's websites. So, Great. That's good stuff. I appreciate you telling me that because I'd like to go ahead and get a copy of it. But we're in here tonight in the Walking Horse Hotel, and, and there's been a lot of activity. You've caught a ton of it while you've been here as well. I know we did last time we were here. Many other teams have been here as well. Um, where do you feel are the hot spots based on your experience and the other team's experiences that you know? Okay, well I'll start with the, the quickest way to say it I guess is like it's not just one place, it's, it's haunted the entire building. I mean literally we could talk for hours about all the experiences, <laughs> my experiences right. and everybody else's. But um, the, the quickest way to break it down is the first level is more of a, um, I, I mean although there has been like kind of some weird experiences there, mm -hmm. it's more of a peaceful feeling, especially in the music hall, there's more of like a, kind of like an angelic type presence in there. Uh, the second floor is kind of, kind of more, um, picks up a bit um, and there's been all sorts of different types of activity. Um, you'll hear boots walking around like here on the first floor. You'll hear boots walking around broad daylight um, like before Ray and then moved in the managers. I, I was probably the one who stayed here alone, um, you know, more than anybody other than Joe. So, I mean, I would be here by myself all the time and, you know, because I help with the haunted attractions and stuff. So, I'd be here all the time and just all kinds of crazy stuff will happen. Uh, you'll hear boots, you'll hear um, just doors open shut, furniture moving around, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. 206 um, in, in the second floor is, is I feel, on a whole other level. Um, I deal with, obviously with the title of my book, Battling Demons of Darkness, it's, I deal with the darker side of stuff. Um, 206 has had a lot of um, like incidences, I guess, you know, uh, certain things that um, are more intense, I guess you would say. Um, people's been held down and stuff like that too. And uh, I've personally uh, been messed with, uh, had a lot of um, evil type dreams and stuff like that. And I've had other friends that stayed in that room that's had the same exact encounters. And that didn't happen in any other room other than that. And then you have the third floor, which is hands down the most intense um, place directly behind me right here on our first year of our haunted attraction, we actually had um, a security guard get punched in the face by whatever you want to call it, ghost spirits, whatever. But um, previously before that, him and his brother, and they're big guys now, him mm -hmm. and his brother were talking a lot of um, uh, vulgar language, you know, oh, saying, oh yeah, oh, if I seen a ghost, I would, you know, do this, do that. <laughs> so they were saying all kinds of, yeah, so they were saying all kinds of crazy stuff, but, um, 
but literally I was in here acting with his um, his wife and in between a set all of a sudden he flings the door open holding covering his eye and um, and he was terrified and then the second that he moved his hand I mean it welted up his eye uh, or right underneath his eye yeah so I mean and his brother also got punched in the stomach later that night so wow. Well, folks, again, too, the noises you're hearing in the background, that's the team kind of scrambling around trying to get themselves acclimated. We're all anxious to get started on this hunt, and uh, sounds like, you know, Mark is pretty on the spot with about the activity up here. It's been pretty, this is the most intense floor. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's something that we're going to have to get into and, and dig up later. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the show. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring a lot of evidence your way. Um, Brandon, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, appreciate man. your time tonight as well, walking through with us. But give us about a uh, minute and a half, folks. We're going to come back to you. Appreciate it. Stay with us. All right. We've had uh, a pretty decent walk through earlier with Mark. We had another uh, conversation with Brandon Boston. The guys done a lot of investigations here. We've had a lot of teams come in that he's worked with in the past and all. I've done a lot of investigations here. A lot of claims of activity. Mark's brought forward a lot of information as well. So we're going to begin now in the lobby of the hotel. Uh, we're going to begin all the way in the middle, uh, the middle, the end of the building. Uh, through the middle in a place called Chase's Music Lounge or Chase Music Lounge. They have a lot of live events in there and there's been some claims of activity in the building um, as well in that part of the building and uh, we're just going to go in there and find out what's going on. So follow with us now as we're going through and see what we can see. All right, what we got is uh, one of our usual devices. Uh, this is a paracorder designed by a company called Paranologies and uh, we've used it pretty pretty religiously in a lot of our hunts and uh, what it does is actually register static in EMF uh, so if an entity is in a room with us and makes contact with a device it'll go from blue to green to red, red being the hottest point that there is and it's uh, been a really good uh, piece of equipment for us and it's going to use two of them this time uh, just to see if there's any interaction that can differentiate between the two devices and see if we can get something to move between that device and that like that <laughs> um, between that device and that device, and then we're also going to be operating with uh, okay. Then we're also going to be operating with the Ghost Meter Pro, um, our usual device as well, and uh, see if we can get some interaction going. Whoa, whoa! Just, the right just, one just went off. Yeah. Now what will happen is the entities have the ability within 15 feet, as I've been told, of being able to interact with these devices. Um, Maker told me they can have up to a 15 foot reach to start out. Um, of course, as they get closer, it's going to get red. So, and then this device goes from a pro in a fourth mode, actually, it's communication mode. It'll actually be able to stop, the dome light will come on, and we'll be able to actually have yes and no conversations with something here. So, we're going to begin a EVP session in the house. The last time we were here, I think we got a couple of EVPs, didn't we, in here last we time? Did. A couple of EVPs in here last time, and it was uh, an interesting, uh, interesting uh, situation to hear. There's uh, uh, a lot of energy comes through here. Mark described a lot of that earlier when we were doing a walkthrough. So well, let's uh, let's go ahead and begin uh, our EVP session. My stomach, Tagging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to be doing something called real time. Anybody's ever watched our show before? Um, real time is recording is what we're going to be doing. We have contact, so I'm going to start to ask me some questions. So, are you somebody that was here before when we when we were here last? Let up once for yes and twice. For... Okay. <laughs> that was pretty good. So you are the person that we have interacted with before. That's a solid guess. Somebody's stomach? Yes, mine. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Do you like us being here? No. That was a no. Do you like people? You're agreeing with me. Do you not like people coming in here and talking with you? Do you like to just be left alone? Yes. Well, that kind of confirms the last question, doesn't it? 
No, what? Hmm. Somebody getting ready to ask a question? I was. What? We'll have to admit it, omit it from the show, though. Oh, we would? Probably. <laughs> okay. I wasn't going to ask it. I was just thinking it. And you the answer would probably be no? Mm-hmm. I was uh, pretty sure about it. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking, I think. Well, you can come and talk to us, or you can actually interact with these two devices we have on the table. They light up really pretty colors. That was my sneaker. Ah. They don't like All right, did somebody just say hey? I heard that too over to my right. Okay, Who's, who else is in real time? Hi. Did anybody yeah, else I hear that? I heard that, but I thought somebody was breathing. Yeah, I heard a hey pretty clearly. Anybody else hear the bang over there? Yes, I heard that bang. Now that's the place last time we were here, yeah, I saw a shadow kept, yeah, we kept seeing move there. behind the counter. Oh. Can you um, can you interact with us maybe by knocking, if I knocked on something, can you repeat it as an answer? Let me take a picture. No, it was faint. Light knock. Okay. That's that was my, my stomach. stomach. Your stomach, my stomach both. Alright, I'm gonna repeat this again. Can you repeat it back with a knock, please? Every time I every time I knock, <laughs> I came in here and this little like like a somebody pinging a pinging a leg glass. Just like a ting type thing. Let me try it again. Are you the one that we're interacting with right now with the knocking thing? Is that you making that tinging sound? Yeah, that was a little fast. Are you Are Chase? Yeah. Chase, Are you the one making the sound repeat back like a tinging sound? That's twice. <laughs> Did somebody just laugh? How was the camera turning off? Oh. <laughs> it literally sounded like somebody was laughing behind me for half an hour. I'm like, well. Is it done? No, I was just turning oh. off for a second. Yeah. They don't like being dragged out in the cold. Oh, they, they don't, don't like, like being dragged out in the cold. cold. So, so is that why this place is not, not as active? active? Uh, well, in the it forces them to come. Since you're looking at them, it forces them to come into the cold. <laughs> gotcha. To be investigated. So you're kind of dragging them out of bed. Where so. they don't want to be. Yeah. Okay. So they like the fact that we're trying to... No. <laughs> they'd rather stay in tent. <laughs> yeah, they'd rather stay where they're warm. sleeping. Because it's cold. <laughs> Which is the contrary to what most people believe about entities. Well, they they're like cold them. to begin with. They want to eat. They, they yeah. absorb thermal heat to manifest. Right. So right. when they're cold and you're calling them, then they have... It's, it's harder for them. They have to mm. find a way to absorb heat to do it, and if I can't scare you or find some way to do it, then it's harder for them to manifest. Can that irritates them? Well, it does right now because it's cold. They'd rather stay where they're at. <laughs> well, this whole hotel is cold, but this is actually the coldest spot in the place. Yeah. Now, this room's freezing. Yeah. But Mark said once again he thought there was a spring underneath here, so. Yeah. Yeah, we've caught a lot of EMF in this place. We did. It was right over there by that. Um, I bet you if you tried it. One of the chairs you want to go ahead and try it? Again, yeah. I'm it sure I can find it again because we had it last time. There you go. Billy Joe's going to go over there and check out the EMF source and see how big it was. Last time it was pretty big, so. Oh, it was huge. I thought it was more over here where Bruce yeah, is. No, I, they rearranged the chair. The chairs on me, but I thought I just saw I a spike. I you did, 
for a half a second, but last time it was on the floor, remember? It could be over here, where Bruce is, is that what you said? I thought for sure it was near where Bruce, yeah, they've rearranged this entire room since we yeah, were But that's here not the same EMF. Yeah, that's not that's not the same EMF. It was over towards where the vent is, like closer to the back. That's the camera. Well, maybe not. Yeah. That's it's the, over by the picture, Billy. That that's a separate thing, hun. This isn't the same EMF. Okay. See, because that's changing. See. Do you just take a picture? Um. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm hearing camera sounds. Rich? I want to make sure it's what it was. I'm thinking it's... It's, it's his phone. That's... Oh, yeah, I was sitting there going, what? See the mouth Yeah, but from all the way over here? Well, maybe. Okay. Maybe this phone's... Maybe this is electronic... Maybe this is an electric but personality. But I thought it was over here. I thought they had the table separated. So it's easy. It was delicious. There was one room over there. Try like... Over there. Try like... His head. I don't know, but the last time it was a spike. <laughs> but it was at the floor last time. Yeah, it was one of those things where you could take it all the way to the floor and it would go off worse as it got near the floor because, again, Mark saying it is a, I don't know a it water is source that makes that happen. But the room is so rearranged now, it's hard for me to remember. Yeah, because before really the tables were separated here. and there were chairs around each one. Because yeah. that. I don't know. I'm Rich Rillen with Ghost Paranormal. This is Shalissa. We want to introduce a new, new piece of equipment to you right now. It's called the Ghost Meter Pro. It's a piece of equipment we use religiously on the show as well as in every investigation that we do. The Ghost Meter Pro is different than a regular Ghost Meter. It has four different filter settings on this device that allow you to be able to do your investigations better with more clarity. Filter number one that you see lit up here, that is for recent passings because you operate on a different level of EMF. When you go to mode number two by right, depressing the power button, turning it back on, pressing the button on the other side, you go to mode two. Mode two is for ancient passing. So they operate with a different level of EMF once again. Now when you go to mode three, mode three is regular EMF detection. Phones will set it off, microwaves will set it off, just like any other EMF detector whatsoever. Now when you go to mode four, mode four is communication mode. Communication mode is the only mode we re really use on the show. This mode here actually allows you to be able to operate with the entities with a clear once for yes, twice for no. It's extremely accurate. It's been proven by our team to be accurate with EVPs to back it up. Now, this mode also has volume on it. Right now, that's the search pattern mode that you're hearing. That search pattern mode is actually looking for something to come and talk to it. When it engages an entity, this dome light will go solid, that sound will stop, and you're in communication with something. This device everyone that's bought and sold is sent out individually tested to a specific set of standards that we've designed. Ghost Meter Pro stands behind our product. Go with the Ghost Meter Pro. Yeah. It's not the little girl, but I don't know who it is. Can I set this on the stage? Oh yeah, sure. Where's the other one at? You can sit one on the piano, you'll probably get more activity. Over here? Mm -hmm. oh, on, a, on a piano. See if we can get something on there. And that's a new one. Yep. Where's the old one at? Let me see that there. Let me see that there. Uh, that was me. Can you play the piano? Yeah. I didn't mean to hit you guys. Let's see if we can get something out of that. Mark says that you're over here. If you're over here, can you please pass your hand or yourself near those devices on the piano? Please? If you do, they're going to light up pretty colors, and I don't think they're going to hurt you. Again, whose is that? Mine. What was that? What? Somebody else just hear that? Yeah, it sounded yes. like, it sound it like something or somebody talking from like a distance. Yeah, it's a couple of yes. words are pretty muffled. Turn the camera. 
Okay. Well, we're not. We're just trying to interact with you. We're not. We're not trying to to push you out or anything. We just want to talk to you and try to have some communication with you. If that's possible. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I appreciate that. Crazy. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you. Thank you. And I hope I'm not asking for too much for you to do that, but it's, it gives us a sign that we're actually working with you. Were you able to get that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just walk behind us. You don't have time they said they would try to play the piano. They're trying to make push a key, but I don't know really you know how to push the key down to make it do its thing. You have contact. All right. Was uh, were you the one that we just asked to, to make those lights go off? Were you the one who just did that? Right. Okay, that's a little fast. Were you the one who just made that device light up? What was that? It was me moving my foot. Yes. All right, well, thank you very much for that. We appreciate your interaction with us on that. There are two up there. Just for the sake of saying so, could you use, do it to the other one? Yeah, thank you. Good idea. Can you, can you light that other one up, please? Just to let us know that we're, we're definitely dealing with you and... No. <laughs> Is it harder? When they're covered, it's harder. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, actually, I think that, was that, an, one, that of was yes. one of them is one of them is made a little different, so I think it's harder for them to interact with. Okay. Did you just see that too? No, I heard something back there. Yeah, I heard it's something just walked right through Someone there. Walked. Okay. Um, if you have a moment, can we talk to you, please? There's, I feel somebody try. They're trying to push to make the color thing. So. Okay. Give it a minute. See if they can do it. Yeah. I want to thank you for trying to manipulate that object for us. I know it's hard to do. Do you come to visit here or are you here all the time? I heard visit. Visit. Well, thank you for visiting with us while we bring, while we're here tonight. We want to thank you for that. You, you get our respect, and we're not we're not here, like I said, to do anything of ill will. We are here to just interact with you. Did you play the piano? Yep. This place is filled with a lot of noises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the green one. <with> <laughs> That's the green one. Are you female? Can you tell us your name? No. Are you afraid? Doesn't remember. Doesn't remember its name? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a shame. That's sad. Yeah. You have to forgive. Um, You'll have to forgive uh, us if you see us shivering a little. Something it's, it's you know, last time we, we saw you guys, last time you guys saw us, it was 61 degrees in January. 
now it is uh, in the 20s um, in January or February, beginning of February, and uh, wow, you know this yeah. is this this hotel is not um, not heated, um, so it's a little, a little cold in here. But uh, and as Mark was saying, there, our, the belief is that they don't like the cold, so we're gonna move through to another room. There's an in between room here, between here and the lobby. We're gonna try to move there and uh, and see if we can have some interaction with something there. So. Hang with us and we're going to walk through. Who's going to get this one here? Yeah. So, Lizzie, you want to get the K2 meter? Yes, yeah. there we have it. Alright, let's walk to the inter intermediary room. Wow. Or intermediate room. Man, it is cold in here. <laughs> it is cold in here. Yeah, the first time they went off, yeah. No, I mean in here. Are you able to catch them in here? No, no. Oh, it wouldn't take over. It's just it's trying to get in through. What's the only thing? It's trying to eat. It is a weird sensation when you stand here and you can feel it. Right here. <laughs> you, can, you can feel it. It's wild. Are you agreeing with me now? Thanks. That's the feeling I got the first time. Yeah, I remember you talking about that the and last time you were here. everybody said that they didn't feel it. I was sure I felt it. Well, the funny thing is, is Mark was showing us downstairs. You know, I'm going to silence you for a minute. What Mark was showing us this area down here, and he stepped out, I stepped in, it was like immediately some grabbed my solar plexus. Mm -hmm. It was pretty amazing. There's a lot of energy in here. If um, Mark, what's the name of the gentleman we're working with in here? What? The name of the gentleman we're working Cody. with in here? Cody. Cody. Cody, Dick, Cody Dixon. Cody Dixie, or whatever. Dixie Cody. or Cody, if you're here with us, there's two devices on the counter. I would like you to try to interact with one of those devices, please. Can you do that? Is somebody whispering? I'm hearing that. Is somebody whispering? Yes. Too, you're not even in real time. Unless that's unless that's the water draining in there in the uh, the kitchen area. It's got a uh, the yeah yeah the dishwasher the dishwasher. No, that's not what I was hearing. No, I was actually I was hearing a whisper. No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. It's actually just barely dripping in there and it's running down into the sewer pipes areas and it's got okay. just a, a weird. I think it's just I think it's just matricing from in there. Could be. All right, so we have the devices on the table. We actually have now have three devices on the counter. You can interact with any one of them all you want to. They're not going to hurt you. They're not. Stand back a little bit. Stand back. Stand back a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Do we intimidate him? Uh, too many people in one space. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay, we're giving you a little space, a little bit of room. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you're going to interact with contact. If you're going to interact with one of those three devices over there, I'd appreciate it. Can you do that? Can you interact with one of those devices on the counter? And we hear that like every time we ask that question, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so can you... Okay, how about will you? Yeah, there you go. Will you go buy one of those blue lights over there? Thank That's you. Two guesses. 
Is that turning it's, green yes, or is it's that green. blue? It's green. It's green. That's the new one. Oh, it turned a little red. Now it's red. Yep. The Are light in the background is really not helping. Am I going to slide over there? That light in the back is not good. You can you can move closer to it, and you can walk back and back and forth. See. It's red. Oh, it's, it's green, it's green and red. red, and blue. Mm -hmm. You got chicken okay? Thank you so much. Can uh, you keep that up? Yeah. It's pretty, isn't it? Good job. All the way to red. Yay. Are you able to touch the one next to it and do the same thing, please? It's a little easier. Should be easier. Moving. What was that? It's water after the Oh, okay. Yeah, it is matrixing pretty pretty badly. Is it back to it's back to blue. Back to blue. It's all in blue. I can barely see it for some reason in a new Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. If you want, you can move over to the one that is glowing a brighter blue. Let me give you some space. This that red. one should be a little bit easier for you. Are you able to pick it up okay? It's not picking it up on the tube part. It's picking it up on the top of the tubes. Okay. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just. Uh, yeah, you you can. That's what it's doing. It's the other one is really sensitive. You don't have to touch the little, the little one. Maybe near it. Yeah. Okay. Is that any better? Sort of, kind of? Yeah, it's, it's it just doesn't light up bright enough to catch the actual tubes themselves. Now, the one on the left, when it goes, you can see the whole tube. Okay. Well, but the other one, you are, I mean, I'm still catching. I'm catching the tops. You can see it blank on, on film. Say again? You have to stop moving because we can't tell if it's it or you. Okay, I'm not moving. Because it does it within 15 feet, remember? Yeah. You have contact. Okay, are you the gentleman we... Yeah, okay. Let me, let me finish my question first. Are you the gentleman that we've asked to light this up? Is this Cody? Let me give him a little space. Is this coding? Okay. It was a blacksmith. You're a blacksmith? Yes. Okay. Is your nickname Dixie? No. Or is that your last name? Dixon. Dixon. Is that your last name? Is it like Dixon? Is it similar to that? Oh, that's a very clear yes. And search mode. Do you think we need to move upstairs? Yes. Anybody, everybody? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. All right, let's go. 